Hello, my name is Sungmin Ma, and this is my multi module presentation titled Asians in Hollywood, Two Book Girls. I am truly excited to share with you my findings about my primary source that I have gathered throughout this quarter. To begin with, I want to introduce the board of directors and producers behind Two Book Girls. Michael Patrick King, whom you may recognize from Sex and the City, Whitney Cummings, Michelle Nidar, and Liz Astroff. Of course, we can't forget about the main cast. Here we have, from left to right, Sophie Kaczynski, played by Jennifer Coolidge, Oleg, played by Jonathan Kite, Max Black, played by Katja Dennings, Caroline Channing, played by Beth Beers, Earl, played by Garrett Morris, and last but certainly not least, Han Lee, played by Matthew Moy. The basic plot of Two Broke Girls entails two young women, Max and Caroline, who attempt to start their own business selling cupcakes. However, in order to raise the funds, they find employment as waitresses at a local downscale diner owned by Han Lee. There are a series of complicated love affairs along the way, and to describe them all will take hours on end. To be clear, there is no linear plot for two broke girls, as it is a sitcom that attempts to capture the reality of ordinary people like you and me. In capturing the reality of everyday lives, it also highlights the evil nature of human as well. The foundation of the show appears to be a social hierarchy that categorizes characters by their race, which is then ranked from superior to inferior. Here, I created my own interpretation of the class system in two book girls, as it tends to place its white characters at the pinnacle of the social hierarchy, while placing its color characters at the very bottom. Through this model, I make the claim that two book girls deliberately places Asians at the very bottom of the social hierarchy to dehumanize the main character Han. Through the underrepresentation of Asian actors, feminization of Asian masculine traits, and the condemnation of Asian customs. Han, the ultimate paradigm of the stereotypical Asian, is the show's main target and victim of, of its overly exaggerated acting and racist puns. Rather than pure comedy, some of the jokes are baffling and unthinkable, as jokes about suicide are mentioned often as well. When the other characters display racial discrimination towards Han, it is the relationship between Oleg and Han that is the most peculiar. From this scene, see if you can observe the power imbalance and how Oleg uses notions of white supremacy and Asian stereotypes to abuse his boss. The sleeves up of all my shirts. And then go buy more shirts and cut the sleeves up all shirts. You must sweat sleeves. Do not tell me what to do. I was working here when you were still a dumpling on your father's chopstick. <laughs> This is starting to sound like real tech. The customer asked for crust off of turkey crumb. Did they say that? Or is this something you say that they said? They said it. But I say I see screw the boss and eat this tea. I'm sorry. Someone call Ripley's. There is a small mouse speaking. And I bet for sure it comes with stinky armpits. Why don't you see for yourself, Ratatouille? I've got to go fight starting. Oh, stinky. So stinky. My mother in Korea called me and said, what is that smell? I'm surprised you're upset by man's smell. Most women like you enjoy it. Yo, man, I've got 20 dogs on hot and he's crappy. Your English is terrible. My English is terrible than your terrible English. What? I couldn't understand a word you said. What? So sorry, I couldn't understand a word you said. Excuse me, regular sized people. I am on break until he apologizes. The show also dehumanizes Asians by creating a lose lose situation for Asians who are extremely successful or extremely poor. While Asians have been labeled as a model minority due to their ability to find success in American society, they are still subject to discrimination and ridicule due to the stigma that Asians are workaholics whose lives are centered around work. The show also depicts Asians as parasites who are a threat to society. Asian mafia leader Huang exemplifies this label as he is associated with greed and selfishness. It also reflects the American society's general fear and distrust of Asians. Two Broke Girls utilizes the white-oriented male masculinity to feminize Asians in contrast to the masculinity of the white man. 
Indeed, the three criteria consist of body type, facial hair, and penis size. In the show, Oleg embodies the male image as he is athletic, tall, hairy, and sexually developed. On the other hand, Han is short, round, clean shaven, and sexually inexperienced. Through these tropes, the show standardizes the white man as a model for masculinity and stigmatizes the physical traits of Asian men who are flawed compared to the white man. Two Broke Girls condemns Asian customs and values by referencing the tiger mom, who strictly monitors her children's behavior 24-7. While, while, while the white man values individuality and self-reliance, the Asian man values family and seeks family approval before acting. Rather than embracing different kinds of way of life, the show scorns Asian traditions as too restrictive and outdated, which depicts Asians as childish due to their dependency upon the parents. This, the show also seeks to dehumanize Hans through the predator with prey chase analogy between the Asian ma man and the white woman. While Han is excited to be able to physically touch Max, Max is clearly distraught and recoils back in a shocked state. Indeed, the show depicts Asians as inadequate and lacking in masculinity to be able to obtain a white woman. The perceived, femin the, the perceived femininity and the white woman's lack of attraction towards the Asian man, likens the Asian man with a predator. It encourages the viewers to keep the white race from defilement by prohibiting the white woman and the Asian man. The show permits the white man to humiliate the Asian man through the sexual exploitation of his body. Instead of homosexual passions, the white man sexually oppresses the Asian man to show off his dominance. Indeed, Oleg is seen as dominant, while Han is passive. This allows white audiences to also partake in this exploitation as it reaffirms that Asian males impose no viable threat to the white man's power. I want to close off this presentation by saying, initially, I was intimidated of basing my project on a primary source that had no extensive research done on it. However, I'm really glad that I stuck with it, and I am proud to say that I am the first scholar who did extensive research on two bird girls. Indeed, it, is, it has been such a joy to see the fruits of my hard labor and work. I'm grateful for the challenges instead of taking the easy way out by choosing a well-documented primary source. Here is a helpful list of all the secondary sources I have incorporated during my research project. Each one has served me tremendously, and I enjoyed analyzing each and every single one of them. If you are more interested in the process that I have encountered in my research, please feel free to check out my blog page, where I discuss the various steps that I've taken for this, for this project. So thank you for listening, and I hope to See you soon, and I hope that you stay safe and healthy.